If you're truly serious about improving your scoring, then working on the 30 to 80 yard pitch shot is an area of the game that should really have your attention. And yet what I see is people who struggle with this shot through a lack of practice and a lack of understanding of exactly what should be done. And this is costing you so many shots every time you play. So let's discuss this shot in detail, the setup, the execution, and allow you to take this area of your game from something that's a weakness into an overnight strength that will immediately reduce your scores. I wanna begin by defining this pitch shot, this 30 to 80 yard pitch shot, which is everything from a full swing with my sand wedge down to a pitch shot that would fly, let's say 30 yards through the air. And the definition of a pitch shot in my mind is a shot that spends more time in the air than it does on the ground. These pitch shots are gonna be mostly in the air. When they land, they're gonna have some spin and they're gonna stop relatively quickly. This is not a chip shot, which would tend to spend most of its time on the ground. Now we've got the shot defined, we understand what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and help you to fix it. So why is it that you struggle so much with this 30 to 80 yard mid distance wedge shot? Well, there's two key reasons that I see. Number one, golfers trying to still make a full backswing and yet in an attempt to reduce power and how far they hit the ball, come down to impact, deaccelerate, quit on the shot, flex their arms and get into all sorts of bother around contact. Topping the ball, thinning the ball, hitting the ground before the ball. You have no idea how that ball is gonna come off the club face. It just leads to completely inconsistent results. The second reason would be that because the shot is less distance and you don't want the ball to go so far, people tend to freeze as far as their body motion is concerned and try to play this shot exclusively with their hands and arms. That's not gonna work either. The minute you start changing the radius of this swing by flexing the elbows and the wrists, you're gonna run the risk of topping, thinning, and chunking the ball once more. So the real reason you struggle with this shot is because you don't really know how to play it. So I'm gonna explain the setup adjustments and the swing adjustments to help you hit these all important mid distance wedges. The first thing to clarify when it comes to discussing this shot is club selection. You should be using anywhere between a 52 and 56 degree wedge. There's a very important and specific reason why you should be using what for most of you that will be your gap wedge or sand wedge for this shot. And that's because it produces at impact the most efficient blend of loft, launch and spin. If we have too much loft in our hands, let's say a 58 or a 60 degree lob wedge for this shot, you're gonna find that the ball runs up the club face too much, you lose friction. And as a result, the launch and the speed of your ball off the club face will vary too much. You'll also lose spin and therefore control. Take the loft down too much and start to try and play this with a pitching wedge or a nine iron, and the ball's just gonna come off too fast. You're not gonna have any ability to control it. It's not gonna go high enough, and it's certainly not gonna spin and stop quickly enough. So very important that you start with somewhere between 52 and 56 degrees. That's the window of club selection that you should be using for your pitch shots. Now we've established the correct club selection, let's start talking through the execution. We're gonna start out with the shortest version of this shot, which would be somewhere around the 30 yard mark. I'm gonna stand closer to the golf ball and I'm gonna reduce my stance than what I would have for a full swing. My heels are approximately one club width apart, my toes more or less two to three club widths apart. And the ball position is very much in the center of my stance. One significant difference between a pitch shot and a regular full shot, my shaft is pretty much vertical at setup and that's because as I hit this ball, I want to return the shaft into a pretty neutral or vertical condition. I'm not looking for the shaft lean that I tend to want in my fuller shots. Why? Well, first of all, shaft lean is going to produce more of a downward angle of attack that helps me hit higher up on the club face. I don't want to hit high on the club face. For these pitch shots, I want to hit as low as possible on these grooves. Why? because the lower I hit it on the face, the more spin and friction I'm gonna produce. It's gonna give me more control. So those are the setup adjustments. Stand closer, feet closer together, shaft more neutral. And the final adjustment that I would make with my pitch shots is I would tend to look to take a more weaker grip, meaning that both my left and right hand are turned more to the left. 
So as I look down at my left hand for my chipping and pitching, I'm going to see maybe just one knuckle on my left hand. And as I place my right hand on top, I'm going to just take it that little bit further over than I would do for my standard swing. And the reason I do that is it helps me as I swing back and through to maintain a club face that's a little bit more open. The single biggest difference between a pitch shot and a full shot would be the sequence of how we move our body through the swing. In a full swing where we're trying to create power, we have separation between the hips, the torso, the arms and the club. We create this lag effect, if you like, this sequencing that allows us to create power. In a pitch shot, we don't want power. We want to reduce the power. So we take away the separation and the sequence and we actually try to move everything much more together. So if I thought about it as simply as possible, I'd tell you that the shaft and the grip here point at my belt buckle or my belly and as I swing back and through, particularly for this first version of the shot, the shortest version of the shot, I'm actually trying to feel like I keep everything turning and moving together. Notice how my knees are changing flex, even on such a short swing. My hips are turning, my shoulders are turning, and my arms are really just staying connected to my torso, and I'm using the rotation to move the club. This would be the basic version and the first version of a pitch shot. I'd feel like my arms are very much attached to my body. Good exercise here would be to place a towel under your arms and keep the towel connected to your body. I do this just with my shirt sleeves here as I pull them up and squeeze my triceps against my torso. I'm going to maintain that pressure between my upper arms and my torso as I swing back and through. And the first version of this swing for me just feels like the club gets to around hip height on both sides of the swing. Another key part of this exercise would be understanding that you wanna build some symmetry into the swing. So your 30 yard shot, your 25, 30 yard shot, this small version, you still want to have the same sort of length backswing and match that with a similar length on the follow through. And in the finish of this shot, I'll try and always feel like my belt buckle, the butt end of the grip, the club itself are all pointing at the target, even for such a short shot. That one carried 35 yards. That was a little bit longer than I wanted, but you can see that the motion is very much one of being connected. Okay, there's no force being applied down towards the ball. I'm not driving this club into the ground. The other thing to consider here is as you hit these shots, you're really just looking to brush the grass. We don't want to see too much of a divot for this shot. Yes, you should make contact with the ground, but it should be very light in terms of the, the strike on the, the grass or the mat. And one of the ways you ensure that that happens is, once again, by keeping these arms connected to your torso, using your torso to move the, body, move the club around you, like so. That's going to ensure that this radius, this distance that the club is from your body, stays more constant. So slightly soft arms that set up, ball in the center, not too much shaft lean, turn back everything together, turn through everything together. That was nicely struck, that one came out a little bit softer, that's gone exactly 30 yards. So the first version of this shot, very simple in terms of its explanation and pretty simple in terms of its execution once you know what to do. Now we need to hit the ball 50 yards. The difference in this one would be standing just slightly further from the ball and widening the stance slightly to support the bigger motion of the swing that we're gonna require. And what really starts to happen here is we're gonna see more of a wrist set starting to occur on both sides of the swing. The symmetry that we looked for in the smaller swing exists, so the L shape, you, if you like, that I create between my lead arm and the shaft on the backswing. I'm going to try and mirror that in terms of how far through we swing. And if you learn to put these ends to both parts of your swing, the backswing and the follow through, 
you'll begin to find that the middle part of the swing, impact, the speed and the delivery will become more consistent. And that's going to allow you to deliver the club in a more consistent fashion and produce the desired outcome in terms of distance. You won't see so many balls going further or shorter than you expect. In terms of adding the wrist hinge, a couple of checkpoints. Number one for me, make sure that when you swing the club back, the leading edge of your wedge is at least vertical. And this would be different from a full swing where we've tried to keep the face more turned down. This would be one of the key problems that I see with amateur golfers struggling with this pitch shot. They get the club face too closed, they deliver too little loft, and with the club face shut when they hit the ball, they hit a lot of these shots to the left. As you swing back, you should start to feel some extension in your lead wrist, that's this cupping motion. So the logo of my glove, just as the club face itself, are pointing slightly up to the sky. This would be ideal. That feeling of just extending the lead wrist slightly will give you that setting of the wrist where the shaft starts to set on this angle. So we're adding in some wrist, but we're still keeping the arms connected to the body. We're still keeping the arms touching the torso, and we're still using the rotation to get most of the travel of the club here. It's just that as we increase the length of this swing slightly, we're adding in a little bit of wrist hinge on the backswing. We've got this L shape to L shape. Pretty nicely struck. That one's landed at 51 yards. 51 yards, nice shot, first, first attempt. That ball went much higher and that was a nice contact. So I was able to demonstrate there the, the extra swing on both sides that was necessary to take that shot from a 30 yard shot to a 50 yard shot. Now I'm using these numbers somewhat arbitrarily. They're not necessarily the exact distances that you'll hit the ball. What I am trying to introduce to you today is the concept of having a system for a small version of this shot, a mid or medium version of this shot, which would be the 50 yard or the L to L swing. And I'll go on and show you the fuller version of this shot shortly. It's important that you take time to practice this skill and try each of the versions of this swing. Some of them will be more familiar to you than others. One, some of them you'll find much easier to produce. And I would encourage you to get good at that stock shot. The ones that you find easier to do should be the ones that you're trying to take with you and trust once you're out on the golf course. The final shot to share with you from this mid distance wedge would be for me an 80 yard shot. So my sand wedge would typically go around 100 yards. This 80 yard shot is around 80% of its full distance. And in order to achieve this shot, I'm gonna once again, keep standing slightly further from the ball. So I've got almost back to what would be a full swing setup. I've got the ball still in the center, but my stance has again got slightly wider. This is because, once again, the rotation on this swing on both sides is going to increase. In fact, the way that I would hit this shot, an 80% shot with my sand wedge, would be to try and almost feel that the swing is full, full swing for me on both sides, but my tempo is going to slow down. And it's the reduction in the speed and the tempo that stops me from pulling on this club and trying to hit this ball too hard. So I'm gonna hit this shot, but I feel like I'm moving slower than my full swing. I'm not trying to go shorter, I'm just trying to go slower. That felt really nice. Super contact, that ball's landed at 82 yards. That felt really comfortable. I often think of myself when I'm hitting that shot, you know, I think of players with really slow, smooth rhythm like Fred Couples, which is one that always springs to mind. I'm trying to hit this shot with no intent of adding power or speed. I'm just going through the motions of making sure I complete my backswing, complete my follow through, but do it in a very smooth fashion. So one final time to recap three different swings to produce three different distances. The shortest one is gonna have you standing the closest to the ball, the shaft's neutral, the feet are closest together, and I'm gonna keep my arms connected to my body and just feel like it's my torso and my body moving the club. This is gonna go about 30 yards. That felt really nice. 
Again, even for such a short shot, that landed at 32. Even for such a short shot, look at the follow through. Look how much I've turned my body and pivoted to the finish. The second version of the shot, the 50 yard shot, well, we're just gonna build out that setup slightly. So we're gonna get a little further from the ball, the stance gets a touch wider, and I'm gonna keep the pivot and the arms connected. I'm just gonna start adding in this wrist, which is this upward movement of the club. Setting the wrists L shape to L shape. Once again, look how far through I followed through that finish, that one 48 yard carry. So pretty close to exactly the distance I wanted. I can start to dial these in and have some confidence that the ball is going to go the expected distance and that breeds confidence around the green. You know you're going to be able to hit the shot that you need to. Final version of this shot, the 80 yard shot for me. So full setup pretty much, standing further from the ball, stance wider, full swing, full swing, but we're going with nice smooth rhythm, very, very slow. No attempt to hit the ball, just to complete the swing on both sides. Felt really nice, that one's gone. 79 yard carry. So I've got those feels and those distances pretty much dialed in. I've got a nice sense of what they feel like. What you have to do is start out practicing. Experiment with those different feels and those different ideas. As I've already said, gravitate towards the shot and the swing length and the swing speed that feels most comfortable for you. And finally, you really need to measure how far these balls are going. It isn't really enough to stand at the driving range and just watch where they land. You really wanna get some feedback from a launch monitor of some description that can tell you exactly how far these balls are going. Once you do that, you're gonna start building your confidence as far as this golf club and this pitch shot is concerned. So once you're faced with a shot that's 40, 45, or 50 yards, you have a system in place, you have a plan or a process that you're gonna follow in order to give you the best chance of success. So there's the truth about pitching, the way you need to set up and adjust for different distances. You will not get the results without putting the effort in. Go ahead, spend some time at the driving range next time you're practicing. Work specifically on improving those shots and I promise you, your scores will reduce overnight. If you found today's video useful, please hit the like button. It really helps this video to get seen by more people and so many of you need help with this short game stuff that I'd like lots of people to see this video. In fact, if you think about it, the higher your handicap, the more of these pitch shots you're actually faced with every single time you play because you're gonna miss more greens than the better golfer. So the worse golfer that you are, the more important this shot becomes. So go ahead, hit that like button and let this video be seen by more people. And if it's your first time here, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. Now you know the truth about pitch shots and how to hit those 30 to 80 yard shots, check out this video next which discusses chipping around the green, wrists or no wrists. I promise you this will be the most important chipping video you've ever watched.